My name is Johnny Dean Mann. I'm from Bath in the UK, and I'm an artist, a writer, and a magazine editor. So I'm here at Art Basel to essentially report on the event for my magazine, The Tickle. Um, the Tickle is a sort of a community project, essentially, it's at, at the community level. And so having someone from that community on Tezos NFTs reporting on such a major event uh, is, is really important, I think. Yeah, the Tickle's remit and its kind of founding purpose, I guess, was to just really focus on the quality art within the Tezos NFT space. The NFT space, particularly at the beginning, where there was a lot of chaos, there was a lot of people minting quite a lot of stuff um, and across all sorts of genres from all across the world. So we saw all of that activity as fantastic to start with, but also that maybe a, just a slight soft curation and, and trying to highlight the best artists and the, and the best writers within that space would be something that would, people would find useful. The thing that we do and the thing about the tickle that I enjoy the most actually is talking to artists. So I, I think the purpose and the mission of the tickle has slightly evolved since we first started. We initially saw it as a little pamphlet, tourist guide, visitor guide maybe for people outside of the ecosystem. But now it's more a case of it's a publication that gives context to art, gives context to artists, their story, their background, their motivations. I think that people really appreciate it. The artists themselves like the platform uh, to, to be able to speak about their work. Uh, they, they appreciate that other people can kind of learn a little bit more about them in a, in a more in-depth way than perhaps is possible on just Twitter, for example, or just social media. Um, and with the lack of a, a traditional art publication in the space, I think that we serve a really important purpose, I think, for, for those artists. Yeah, NFTs are in an interesting space right now, I think. There was this kind of frenzied beginnings when it just came out of nothing. Then there was this uh, sharp increase in kind of popularity and amount of people joining. Um, and now we're in a kind of uh, what they call a bear market, which is uh, the, the cryptocurrency valuation is very low. But what we're seeing, I think, is a huge explosion of creativity, both in creative writing and visual art. Um, across all genres within those two. It seems like a long time since I've been involved in it, just over a year, but this is a nascent space. It's something that's developing rapidly as we speak. And I think in 10 years, maybe we'll look back and think, wow, that was the very, very early beginnings of what, was, what, was re what really Web3 was about. Mainstream consumers are perhaps quite far away from Web3 and NFTs and, and the culture and the technology right now, I'd say. I was talking with our generative artists from the panel yesterday, Alexandra and Marcel, and we were saying that the generative art is a niche within the niche of NFTs uh, on Tezos, which is a niche within NFTs in general, which is a niche within crypto, and then crypto is a hugely niche thing in terms of general culture. So there's a, there's a huge amount of travel to go before normal people start getting involved. But one of the great things about Tezos is the low barrier of entry and the, and the minimal costs needed to get started. Anyone really who has a social media account can sign up for a wallet and start collecting Tezos very, very quickly in a massive personal collection of artworks. There are a lot of artists on Tezos who became collectors. I became a collector and I have 2,000 pieces plus now and uh, it's something that I'd never done before and, and it's really quite a profound change in, in the way you interact with the, with the art scene. And it's, um, I, I think it's something that normal people would, would get a lot from and I, I'm really excited about that future. Blockchain technology in general, I think the decentralization of that is a very profound and important part of Web3. Web2 was about kind of very centralized institutions, uh, very big social networks run by big uh, globalized companies that, that had all the power. If you were an influencer or a creator on YouTube, you didn't have much power. You know, at the whim of the company, they could shut you down or, or cancel your kind of exposure. And there was a lot of risks involved in that. Whereas decentralized economy in a, in a space you have a bit more freedom to control your own destiny, I think, and that has big 
implications outside of just NFT in the art world and in, potentially in, in business and in, in organizations, brands, etc. And government, perhaps even. Uh, it's uh, Some big changes are coming and I'd, not many people are aware of them yet, but I think the one of the reasons we we stick with the tickle and we've been doing it for a year is just to document this space and document the changes and, and it's a really important change and, and it's it's something that people will look back on as, uh, as much more profound and, and impactful than we really even see it as now.